أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد النبي الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أمسينا وأمس الملك لله والحمد لله لا شريك له لا إله إلا هو وإليه المصير أمسينا على فطرة الإسلام وكلمة الإخلاص وعلى دين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى ملة أبينا إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين اللهم إني أمسيت منك في نعمة وعافية وستر فأتم علي نعمتك وعافيتك وسترك في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما أمسى بي من نعمة أو بأحد من خلقك فمنك وحدك لا شريك لك فلك الحمد ولك الشكر يا رب لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to uh, the Friday night uh, lecture Continuing our series of stories of the prophets or lives of the prophets And tonight we will continue the story the amazing and beautiful story of uh, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Last time we talked about the end of the trial Yusuf alayhi salam went through, the second one. The first trial was with his own brothers. The second trial was with the wife of Al-Aziz, the minister. And we said that the husband, the minister, Al-Aziz, were convinced that Yusuf didn't do anything wrong. He was innocent at the beginning. And he was fair. He blamed his wife, and he asked her not to do it again. And he asked Yusuf to move forward and not to spread you know, the word, not to say anything about what happened, just you know, keep it for yourself, and that's it. And they tried very hard to keep the incident away from the ears of people. But despite whatever they have done, the word went out to the city. And basically, before the city, I mean, when they say the city in the Quran, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means a specific type of people. And the scholars in this story, specific story, the scholars said that the news, what happened, the incident, became known among the ladies, the women of the palace the women of the noble class, the high class, the women, the wives of different ministers and the surrounding of the king and all that stuff. So this is kind of the elite of the society. The women heard about what happened and they started blaming the wife of Al Aziz. How come? You know, I mean, if she got into an affair with somebody with a, you know, in a high class, it's understandable, but this is her slave. How can she do that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about what happened, starting from surat, uh, in surat Yusuf, starting from verse 30, 30. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ نِسْوَةٌ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ امْرَأَةُ الْعَزِيزِ تُرَاوِدُ فَتَاهَا عَنْ نَفْسِهِ And women in the city said, the wife of an Aziz, the wife of the minister, is seducing her youthful slave. Her youthful slave, Fataha, he was basically her slave. قَدْ شَغَفَهَا حُبَّ إِنَّا لَنَرَاهَا فِي ضَلَالٍ مُّبِينٍ His love has entered the depth of her heart. Surely we see her in open error. The error here, dalal, the misguidance, the wrong thing, not because she got into this affair, no. They don't mind, you know, anyone to do whatever they want. But doing this with her slave at their standard, you know, their, their way of thinking, it was not acceptable. If she did it with someone else who belongs to the elite, to the high class of the society, that's fine. According to them, that's fine. But doing it with her slave, that's why they said, we see her in open error. She was not to do this with her slave. So this is what was going around. This is what, what the, 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 the women in the city started talking. Of course, the wife of Al-Aziz heard about it. And she didn't like that. And she wanted to prove to them that she was right in doing that. And these women had no idea how handsome is this young man. You know, some scholars and some Mufassireen, when, we talk, when they talked about the beauty of Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, they said that he had half of the beauty of the world, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created al-husn, the beauty, and divided that beauty into two halves, two portions. One portion for Yusuf alayhi salam and the other portion distributed among all Allah's creation. Subhanallah. Can you imagine the beauty of Yusuf alayhi salam? The Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith, hadith al-Isra, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa with this miraculous journey of al-Isra and al-Mi'raj, you know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he was ascending up to the seventh heaven, he met the prophets. He saw them. And one of the prophets that the Prophet ﷺ saw that night was Prophet Yusuf. ﷺ. And he said about him, فَمَرَرْتُ بِيُوسُفَ وَإِذَا هُوَ قَدْ أُعْطِيَ شَطْرَ الْحُسْنِ I passed by Yusuf. And when I saw him, I realized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him half of the beauty that he has created. That's why it was said that Yusuf alayhi salam, of course, he knew what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him, the beauty. So every time he had to deal with a woman, he used to cover his, his face. He used to cover his face to protect others. Subhanallah. And by the way, the scholars, they said that, you know, one of the explanation of shatrul al-husn, a uh, 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 half of the beauty, they said that uh, the, the, the beauty was distributed between Adam and Yusuf alayhi salam. They said that Adam alayhi salam was the most handsome, beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? They said because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him, created him with his own hands. So Adam was the most beautiful, handsome creation ever. And next to him comes Yusuf alayhi salam. And they say that Hawa was the most beautiful woman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever created. And next to her, after her, comes Sarah, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is what the scholars uh, said. So, coming back to the reaction of the wife of Al-Aziz. She heard that the women in the city 
in the palace are speaking about her, blaming her. So she wanted to prove to them that they were wrong. So she invited them. All the women that talked about her were invited to her own place. And she gave them food. And she gave them knives. Food that should be cut by knives. Apples, Allahu A'lam, maybe something like this. Al-Quran didn't tell us. Al-Quran told us that she gave them knives. And of course, a knife is given to the guest when we give them something to cut with that knife. Here is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ This is verse 31 in Surah Yusuf. فَلَمَّا سَمِعَتْ بِمَكْرِهِنَّ أَرْسَلَتْ إِلَيْهِنْ So when she heard of their comments, she extended an invitation to them. وَأَعْتَدَتْ لَهُنَّ مُتَّكَأَ And arranged for them a comfortable place to sit and eat. وَآتَتْ كُلَّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِّنْهُنَّ سِكِّينَ And gave everyone a knife. And then, وَقَالَتْ أُخْرُجْ عَلَيْهِنْ And then she said to Yusuf السلام, Come out to them. So the scholar said, the Mufassirin said that, before the guests came, Zawjatul Aziz, the wife of Al Aziz, she prepared Yusuf. She asked him to wear the best clothes she, he had, and she asked him to stay in, in a place, in a room, and just wait for her order. When the time came, the ladies came, and they took the whatever food, the fruits maybe, and the knife. At that point, she gave the order to Yusuf alayhi Come out now. They need to see you. قالت وقالت أخرج عليهن. And she said to Yusuf, come out to them. فلما رأينه أكبرنه. So when they saw him, they found him great. And they were so stunned. Akbarnahu. Which means that when they, when they saw uh, uh, Yusuf, they, they couldn't believe that this is a human being. Because, because of his beauty. And were so stunned that they start cutting their hands with their knives. I mean, they got so busy looking at him and impressed of his beauty to the point that they started cutting their hands, their fingers, and the blood started, you know, dropping on their clothes without them paying attention. Can you imagine this situation? Can you imagine a person cutting his or her own fingers with a knife? without paying attention. This is how they were stunned and impressed with the beauty of Yusuf alayhi salam. وَقُلْنَ حَاشَ لِلَّهِ مَا هَذَا بَشَرًا إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا مَلَكٌ كَرِيمٌ And they said, O oh God, He is no human being. He is but a noble angel. مَلَكٌ كريم. It's impossible that this is not a beauty of a human being. This is a beauty of an angel, Malakun Kareem. Subhanallah. At that point, at that point, the wife of Al Aziz said something. They to she told them what the message that she wanted them to hear. قالت فذلكن الذي لمتنني فيه. She said, "This is the one about whom you reproached me. You blamed me because of him. Do you see now the person I was dealing with? 
Do you understand why I reacted that way? I took that action. Do, do you still blame me now? This is, what, this is what she wanted to tell them. And yes, I seduced him, but he abstained. She is reaffirming. She was not shy to tell them again, yes, I did it. So what? Yes, I seduced him, but he abstained. So she is confirming that Yusuf alayhi salam was innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. He didn't have any wrong intention about her. She is the one who did the wrong thing. And then she said, and if and should he not follow my command, he shall be imprisoned and will be disgraced. Subhanallah. Look at the evil within this woman towards Yusuf alayhi salam. Despite what happened, despite that her husband is aware of the situation, and he kind of forgave her and didn't want to blame her. Okay, that, that's okay. You did something wrong. Move on. Yusuf, keep quiet. Okay, don't do it again. That's, but she kept insisting that I am still going to ask him. And if he doesn't do it again, he will be thrown in the jail. He will be sent to the prison. And he will be disgraced. And she said this while Yusuf السلام, was hearing. He was there. So she is still threatening Yusuf السلام. If he doesn't submit to her wrong desire, he will face the consequence. And Yusuf السلام, was there, was listening. And this time, she said it in public, in front of all the women. She was not shy to hide her wrong intention, and she said it in front of everyone. Yusuf السلام, when he heard this, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is in a situation where there is no one else to help him. He is surrounded by people who are pushing or trying to push him to do something wrong. Who can help in this situation? Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one. So he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, this is verse 33. He, Yusuf said, my Lord, the prison is dearer to me than what these women invite me to do. The prison is dearer to me. I would like to go to prison and not to do what they are inviting me to do. By the way, the scholars say that when the wife of Al-Aziz threatened him and insisted on him to submit to her, the ladies who were there, they supported her. And all of them, they turned to Yusuf, telling him that you should submit to your master. You should listen to her. You should do whatever she is asking you to do. So everyone became against him. That's why he said, يَدْعُونَنِي What they are inviting me to do. Not only one woman, but all of them now, they came against him, supporting the wife of Al-Aziz, subhanAllah. He was so vulnerable at that situation to the point that there was no one who could help him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, وَإِلَّا تَصْرِفْ عَنِّي كَيْدَهُنَّ أَصْبُ إِلَيْهِنْ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And if you do not turn their evil away from me, I shall get inclined towards them and shall be among the ignorant. What does that mean? It means that, Ya Allah, if you leave me by myself, I might do it. I'm weak. I'm weak as a, as a human being, as a person. 
So that's why, Ya Allah, I need your help. I need your support. Don't leave me alone. Save me from this situation. Even if they take me to, to prison, I don't care. Save me from this situation, Ya Allah. The answer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came immediately. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his dua. He, he, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, the, the, the prison is dearer to me than what they are asking me to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his dua. Allah Azza wa Jal said in verse 34, فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ فَصَرَفَ عَنْهُ كَيْدَهُنْ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So his Lord accepted his prayer and turned their evil away from him. Surely he is the all-hearing, the all-knowing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the prayer, the dua of Yusuf alayhi salam, and he saved him from the plot, saved him from their evil. What happened after that? After this, you know, these guests left and maybe a few days or even maybe a few weeks after that, what happened is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in verse 35. ثُمَّ بَدَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا رَأَوْا الْآيَاتِ لَا يَسْجُنُنَّهُ حَتَّى حِينَ Later on, even after having seen the clear signs of his innocence, they deemed it proper to imprison him for some time. So what happened basically is Al-Aziz and his wife and the family came together and had a conversation, a discussion about this matter. We see what's going on. People are still talking about it. It's not amongst us only, but there are a lot of people who heard about what happened. So the best option we have to get rid of this situation is to send him to prison. So when we send him to prison, people will forget about him. They won't see him anymore. And people will get busy with their own lives. And خلاص, يعني, let him go to the prison for some time until people forget about the story. Again, Yusuf السلام, is innocent. He is a victim of this injustice. But as he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I prefer to go to the prison than to do what they are asking me to do. And subhanallah, always we say, Al khayru fi Allah. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for us is the best. Even sometimes it's painful, but this is the best option. We never know. Allah knows us better than we know ourselves. Allah knows what's good for us better than what we know about ourselves. So we try to avoid by making the right decisions in our lives. We try to avoid painful situations. But if we find ourselves in a painful situation, we should accept it. Okay, Allah subhan this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for me. I don't like it, but since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me in this situation, for sure it's good for me. It might be painful right now, it might be hurtful right now, but for long term, it's gonna be something good for me. And this is what we learn from the story, one of the lessons that we learn from the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. If we try to compare between falling into that sin or going to prison and spend a few years over there, which one is better? If we think about it from the dunya standard, no, I don't want to go to prison. But if we think about it from an akhira standard, akhira point of view, no, I would like to remain pure and clean, no matter what happened to me, subhanallah. So basically, this is what happened to Yusuf, alayhi as-salatu wassalam. Now, they decided to send him to prison. And it was the best option for Yusuf, alayhi salam. Now he, he entered another trial in his life. The first trial again was with his own brothers. The second 
trial was with the wife of Al-Aziz. And now he is entering what? His third trial. An innocent person going to prison. So do we think that all the people who are in the prison are really, I mean, do they really deserve to be in the prison? No. So many people who are in the prison are innocent. They didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. I mean, when we talk about what's going on in our prison system right here in the United States, I don't know if you had chance to talk to former incarcerated people and try to understand what's going on in this system. It's amazing. So many people who have been, you know, executed for crimes they have never committed. So many people who are spending life in prison for crimes they have never committed. So many people who have been spending time in prison for times they have never been. So why they are there? Because of poverty. Because they could not offer or afford to have a good defense, a good attorney. That's it. Wallahi, I have sat with people who have been, you know, waiting for the time of their execution. But subhanAllah, for whatever reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for them, they, their, their case was, was back in the court and they were, they were found innocent. For some, I mean, they, they spent 20 and 30 years in the prison for something that they have never committed. They're only, the only reason they spend this time in the prison because they could not afford to have a good lawyer. That's it. So many people who are in the prison, they have not, never done anything wrong. Yusuf السلام, is an example. So they decided to send him to prison. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in verse 36, وَدَخَلَ مَعَهُ السِّجْنَ فَتَيَانِ And two men entered the prison with him. Look at the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about Yusuf alayhi salam being admitted to the prison. He didn't tell us that and then they took him. No. Because the story, the next story is about these two people. We don't know whether they entered the, 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 the prison at the same time with him or they were there when he was taken to prison or they entered the prison after him. We don't know. But we know that there were two people who had a story with Yusuf السلام, And two men entered the prison with him. One of them said, Inni arani a'siru khamra. I have seen myself in the dream pressing wine. Pressing wine. وَقَالَ الْآخَرُ إِنِّي أَرَانِي أَحْمِلُ فَوْقَ رَأْسِي خُبْزًا تَأْكُلُ الطَّيْرُ مِنْهِ And the other one said, I saw myself carrying bread on my head of which the birds were eating. Carrying the bread on my head and the birds started eating from this bread. نَبِّئْنَا بِتَأْوِيلِهِ إِنَّا نَرَاكَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ let us know its interpretation. We see you are, we see you, we see you are a man, as a man of good deeds. Min al muhsinin. So, these two people, these two persons, approached Yusuf alayhi And they shared with him a dream. Each one of them saw a dream. And it seems that they saw the dream at the same time, at the same night. So, they went straight to Yusuf السلام, And by the way, these two men, they, they, they were working in the palace. They were working for the king. And they were taken to prison because they did something wrong. Some scholars, they said they you know, tried to do something wrong to the, 
to the king, something like this. So they were taken to, to, uh, to the prison. And one of them was um, uh, serving, his job was serving wine to the king. And the other one was a baker in the palace. He was a baker in the palace. So both of them, or each one of them, saw a dream. And they approached Yusuf salam. Why did they approach Yusuf and they didn't go to anyone else? This is the question. The answer is their comment at the end of their request. When they, when they told him about their dreams, one of them saw himself in the dream pressing wine and serving to the, to the king. The other one saw himself carrying bread on his head and the birds come and eat that bread. And they asked Yusuf السلام, would you please give us the interpretation of this dream? Why? This, this is the key. Because we see you among the, the good doers. Muhsineen. Which means, and this is what the scholars you know, focused on. These two people, they noticed that Yusuf in the prison was different than all the people who were in the prison. He was different. He was always engaged in ibadah, worshipping. He was a wise man. They noticed his beautiful character. That's why they trusted him. Usually people go and share their dreams and seek the interpretation of the dream from people that they trust, right? You don't go out and grab any person from the street or from the store and tell him or her, hey, this is what I saw in the dream. Would you please help me with the interpretation? You don't do this. You don't do this. Usually you go to somebody that you trust. Somebody you trust, his or her righteousness, sincerity, integrity, character. So you go to this person because you think that this person is a good, a good person, right? This is what happened with Yusuf السلام. They noticed that this person was distinguished with his good character, with his ibadah. So they went to him and they shared with him the dream and they asked him to help them with the interpretation. And by the way, the interpretation of the dream was the miracle given to Yusuf السلام. It was the miracle given to Yusuf السلام. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him this miracle. The ability to interpret the dreams in the correct way. So they asked him, they shared with him the dream, and they asked him to help them with the interpretation. Did Yusuf السلام, answer their questions right away? No. Yusuf السلام, took that opportunity and he engaged with them in a long conversation. Yusuf السلام, my dear brothers and sisters, knew that he was a prophet. And as a prophet, he was da'i ilallah. Da'i, which means a person who invites others to the way of Allah. Under whatever circumstances, even if he is in a bad situation, a victim of injustice, thrown in the prison, usually people that, I'm in the prison, leave me alone, man. I mean, I'm, I didn't do anything wrong. So Yusuf was not like this. He knew that he is in the prison for a reason. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him there for a reason. And he never forgot his mission, his task as a prophet. Giving da'wah, inviting people to Islam. Explaining the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people under whatever circumstances. And by the way, Yusuf alayhi salam got engaged with them in this conversation because he knew that when people are in the prison, they listen. That's why the place where the most of the people accept Islam in the United States is the prison. Most of the people who accepted Islam in the United States, they did in the prison. Why? Because 
you know, when, when somebody is incarcerated, there is nothing else that, you know, he can get busy with. And if there is somebody who knows how to give the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to these people, they will grab it. They will accept it. And go and Google, by the way, the statistics of how many, the number of the, the incarcerated people who were introduced to Islam and they accepted Islam. You will be amazed. Subhanallah. You will be amazed. Before COVID, the Islamic Shura Council of Southern California, and ICSD is a member of the Shura Council of Southern California, um, they used to do every year a small conference in Orange County where they invite former incarcerated people who are Muslims who accepted Islam in the prison and just to, you know, talk to them and provide them with the resources and all that stuff. So I attended that conference, you know, several times. And every time I take with me some brothers from San Diego, former inc incarcerated people who accepted Islam in the prison, I take them with me and we attend that conference. It's amazing. When, when you listen to the stories, it's amazing. Each one has a distinguished story. How they were introduced to Islam. Subhanallah. How they were introduced to Islam. So this is something that we should think about, you know? And Yusuf alayhi salam is one of the best examples given to us in the Quran. How a Muslim should never forget his or her task and mission, which is to convey the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the people in this life who, who are lost, who are misguided, who are, you know, in, in, in a path that, that, that won't take them anywhere. Yusuf alayhi salam is the best example of doing that. So, before answering them and giving them the interpretation of the dream, this is what he told them. And I will just mention this and stop here because the conversation between Yusuf alayhi salam and the two persons is a little bit long, so we will continue it next week insha'Allah. But listen to what he, how he started the conversation with them. They, uh, they asked him a question, he did not answer them right away. He said, He said to them, no food provided for you shall come to you, but I can give you its description before it comes to you. SubhanAllah. Whatever food is going to come to you, before the food arrives, I will tell you what kind of food you are going to have. I will give you the description of the food that you are going to have. But listen to this, what he said. This is the knowledge my Lord has given to me. Which means that the ability of telling you the ability of telling you about the food that is coming to you is not from me, it's not my own skills. It's not because I'm smarter than anyone else here, no. This is the knowledge of my Lord. Allah is the one who gave me this knowledge. It's not me. What does that mean? Yusuf is connecting them to Allah, is introducing them to Allah, introducing Allah's power to them in an indirect way. That whatever skills I have, it's not from me, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he told them, Inni taraktu millata qawmin la yu'minuna billah wa hum bil akhiratihum kafirun. I have abandoned the way of those who do not believe in Allah and who are deniers of the, of the hereafter. Again, Yusuf alayhi salam, introducing himself that I don't belong to those who disbelieve in Allah. I don't believe, I'm, I don't belong to those who deny the afterlife. So who I am? This is what he's going to tell them. Who is Allah who, who gave me this knowledge? This is what he's going to tell them. 
So Yusuf السلام, took the opportunity to introduce them to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to talk to them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to introduce himself not as Yusuf with skills, but as a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very powerful and this is very interesting way to start a conversation with people who have no idea about you, who have no idea about Allah, who have no idea about anything in this world. And Yusuf السلام, is giving us the best example. So we will stop here, inshallah, and we will continue uh, next week with um, the rest of the, the discussion that took place between Yusuf السلام, and these, uh, these two people. Um, until then, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, help us understanding the significance of the lives of the prophets. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to implement whatever we understand, whatever we learn in our daily lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always to bless us with knowledge. And say, oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. This is the, the dua that we should always Make to Allah, say, Oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us everything good we have done and forgive us for our mistakes and shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep blessing us, us to keep uh, guiding us and to keep us on the straight path of him until the moment we meet with him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to keep us safe, sound and healthy all the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, our families, our loved ones, and jazakumullah khair. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.